So Robert, um, I'm gonna uh, put you on the hot seat like right away. So like, okay. I can get this for free, right? Like there are how many tools out there that are open source that uh, already can take an open API specification and generate client libraries for me? Like why do I pay you guys six figures like to generate our SDKs for us? Like what's this about? Yeah, um, if anyone in this room might remember, an old version of the OpenAI Node SDK actually was generated using one of these open source tools called OpenAPI Generator. Um, and that was missing one core feature that the OpenAI API really needs is streaming. Um, so we baked that into our cogen for you and other customers. Uh, and then we also have built stuff on top of the generated SDKs using one of our features, which is custom code. And you can make any arbitrary change to the SDKs that you want. Um, just like it was any normal repo. Yeah, which is pretty slick. So I uh, have, has anybody used uh, like structured outputs through the SDKs uh, so far? A couple, couple folks. So uh, that's, that's a good example of like custom code. Like we have like Zod and Pydantic helpers that are a part of the SDK uh, yeah. that uh, is very specific to how the open, AI, open API, uh, excuse me, open AI. Using those <laughs> words in the same sentence yeah. is pretty brutal. Uh, but it's very specific to how our technology works. Um, and like, how does that, like, how does that come together? Like, how do you apply the custom code to the SDK, like, when you're doing a release? Like, yeah, it's, we do some Git magic behind the scenes. Uh, so we have multiple branches. One branch is just, this is the Cogent output. And then another branch is, has all of the stuff on top of it. And then we do some Git cherry picking. Um, yeah, it's, so like, it's, like you, it's like applying a patch at the end of the day. Yeah, basically. Like, you yeah. just, like, the custom code it comes in as a patch. And then uh, what's really nice as the, uh, like you just get a pull request to your repo that has just like all the relevant changes, like new types and stuff like that. So it's pretty sick. Um, all right, so uh, I, I've been working on developer tools for a little while now. Um, and I actually told Robert that the first like API client I wrote was in Node.js 0.8. And like his eyes widened in terror. Like he couldn't believe people were writing software <laughs> like back in those days. Um, but back in my day, Robert, uh, we had to uh, you know write SDK SDKs that sat on top of REST APIs from scratch. Um, and when we did that, like we thought a lot about like what the right level of abstraction was. Like, do you create like a very thin layer over the top of the HTTP request response cycle? Or do you like completely abstract it behind like some kind of big object model? Like what, what do you think like the right place is to land? Like what, how do you think about making that decision? Yeah, I think it really depends on the kind of SDK you're providing. So if you're Vercel ZI package or Langchain, you can come up with your own uh, really nice abstractions for certain use cases. Um, but if you're providing a first party SDK like OpenAI Python, for example, you really need to be able to support everything that the API does. Um, and if you create a really thin wrapper over the HTTP API, then you'll support everything. And then all of your customers and users can just look at your API docs and then really quickly map how the API works into how the SDK works. And if you create your own abstractions, then they would have to learn how the API works and then how to use the SDK. Um, yeah, so, uh, so like using the SDK to like paper over rough parts of the API is generally considered, considered harmful, because like, you'll create some confusion around what's actually there or not. Yeah, exactly. Like, why is this one thing called two different things? Um, yeah. yeah. Totally. So yeah. like, what are, what are like the helpful things to abstract away? Like, what, it, what do you think is useful to create some abstractions in, like with an HTTP interface? Yeah, one of the big ones is pagination, um, because obviously you can't fit all the data in one single HTTP response. And then so it has to be split up into multiple things. Um, and then an SK is a great use case for that. Um, along with auto retries, you know, if you can't connect for some reason, and then that's just an intermittent error, then your application can continue working uh, without any issues if you were just making a raw HTTP request without any retries. Yeah, and like, what, what is the important, like, detail of the HTTP API that you do have to surface? Like what can't you abstract away? Um, one thing is like headers. Like you need to be able to say, um, uh, users will need to be able to access the raw response in some cases. They may want to log all the headers they got or how long it took to just get the response. Or they might not want to parse the, the response into your rich JSON object. Um, so generally, like the the fact that the, that an HTTP request is happening yeah. is essential. Like you're going to need that data um, yeah. eventually. Um, so one other thing. So like automatically generating code uh, for 
SDKs, like has the be has the possible pitfall of like generating bad code, and that's like why like the open source solutions that we were using before, like ultimately we didn't go with those um, because like the generated output was not up to snuff, and like especially like languages like Python, there's this like sense that Python code should be Pythonic, like it should look look and feel a certain way. Like how do you like? Think